Hello and welcome to lecture three in, of mandate one in the course um, on topics in AGI. Um, in the last class, uh, we uh, looked at um, the uh, you know why the buzz around AI has um, uh, uh, has started again, and um, uh, what are the kinds of advancements we're seeing uh, in uh, AI these days. So we looked at several different uh, uh, examples. Uh, which kind of uh, hopefully uh, serves as a motivation for um, for us to study uh, or revisit some of the initial ideas in AI and uh, uh, and the holy grail of what is called uh, artificial general intelligence, right? And so let me start with lecture three today and uh, take it from there. I'll start by sharing my screen. Okay, I hope the screen is visible and um, uh, let's start from here. So we briefly started with um, uh, with the last class. So I'll, I'll briefly uh, kind of summarize what we looked at. Uh, so uh, we saw how um, uh, advances in uh, deep learning have uh, made uh, uh, you know, uh, very new different forms of applications that are possible. So, so here is an example of automatic annotations of uh, of images that uh, that are pretty much uh, standard these days, right? Uh, this was an example of uh, natural language generation uh, using transformer models in uh, uh, in deep learning, and um, uh, this is again pretty old, the GPT two. Now there are even better transformer models where uh, where by giving a prompt you can actually generate a, a complete uh, paragraph from there. Uh, we also saw about uh, advances in autonomous vehicles um, and um, uh, the different kinds of technologies that go into building these autonomous vehicles. Uh, the uh, the model that the internal representation model that they have for uh, for the state of the road around them, uh, the uh, their ability to recognize uh, uh, lane markings and uh, uh, traffic signs as well as uh, avoid uh, uh, obstacles and so on. So some of these advancements. Uh, have been taking place. We also saw about deep fakes, uh, how uh, how the images can be altered and even reconstructed uh, using uh, AI techniques. And we saw how deep fake was uh, was applied uh, for videos uh, with uh, uh, with uh, a fictional uh, account of uh, former President Obama saying something. Right? And, um, so I won't play the video again. We'll uh, we'll go further. We also saw. Uh, uh, example of uh, uh, deep nostalgia, where uh, uh, where AI techniques were used uh, for um, for bringing still images back to life by uh, by using a, a model, a representation model of human facial expressions, and and applying it to two D imagery. And, so. and uh, let me also skip this um, and uh, move on to the next slide. We then saw some examples of advances in robotics, and uh, we saw uh, this example from Boston Dynamics uh, robots uh, uh, performing a synchronized uh, dance routine and so on, right? And, um, and I was mentioning last time how uh, one of the primary inflection points in robotics uh, was in the 1990s, where uh, the limb movements became much more versatile than earlier. Uh, so I was mentioning how robotics, uh, robots earlier uh, to this had very stiff movements. They were, they were hardly able to walk, let alone dance uh, like this, right? And uh, so advances in uh, uh, in some of the architectures uh, promoted um, uh, you know, very versatile uh, limb movements in, uh, in robotics as well. So let me again skip this. Uh, uh, then uh, we saw how uh, AI can also be weaponized. Uh, uh, the example of uh, this 2016 incident where uh, uh, an autonomous robot was uh, was sent in uh, to kill uh, uh, an armed uh, criminal and so on. Right? And uh, we also saw this uh, video from Boston uh, Dynamics again, uh, where uh, uh, robots uh, which could dance can also kill, uh, can also uh, uh, be used in combat and uh, pretty uh, 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 pretty complex um, combat maneuvers uh, they are able to perform. So then we said uh, how um, 
uh, um, AI has generated a lot of buzz around and um, you know a lot of people are talking about whether AI will take over humanity and uh, uh, and there's not something new uh, this this debate has been there for for a while now uh, but again it has rekindled due, uh, due to uh, several technological advancements and uh, uh, so I have put up some quotes from uh, pretty well-known people like Elon Musk and uh, uh, Stephen Hawking and so on as, as part of this. There are also several people um, writing, uh, uh, you know, futuristic uh, books about uh, AI, uh, and uh, and even writing, uh, you know, a calling for uh, a reversal of some of the advancements we have seen uh, in AI. So, right, and um, so Ray Kurzweil, for example, uh, uh, writes a book called The Singularity, where, where the singularity here is defined as as the as the point in time where where uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, exceeds uh, human intelligence, and uh, uh, so so he basically argues that that the singularity is near, and so on. Uh, Nick Bostrom is another person from Oxford who uh, uh, who has this concept called super intelligence, where um, uh, which which basically uh, talks about how um, uh, AI can can exceed human capabilities to to form some kind of a super intelligence and give several different potential forms of super intelligence that that can come up and so on. And a very futuristic now. Uh, while uh, Gary Marcus, for example, uh, 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 is uh, uh, writes as a detractor in saying that uh, uh, why we need to kind of uh, uh, you know reboot or revisit some of the uh, advances we have made in AI and why it is important to uh, build AI that can be trusted right from the word go. You know, we shouldn't be able to uh, we shouldn't be uh, looking at putting trust and ethics as as a layer. Uh, of around um, uh, what AI can already do, but it has to be intrinsically uh, embedded in their designs. Okay, but regardless of whether AI can be intrinsically built with a trust model or not, uh, the fact remains that you can actually build AI without the trust model, and and we are already uh, doing that, right? And uh, so, uh, so that's uh, that's really the issue. So let us uh, now um, turn to today's uh, uh, work and uh, uh, today's lecture and look at uh, some brief history of uh, uh, of AI. And of course, I don't um, uh, I don't um, by any uh, stretch of imagination claim that this is the only history that uh, of AI that can be uh, uh, narrated. Uh, it, this is one walk through the history of AI through through my eyes, if if you may want to call it. Right? Right, and uh, so AI itself is very versatile. It has come from, uh, it has borrowed and uh, uh, has several schools of thought. So what I'll try to do is I'll try to give, um, uh, do some justice to some uh, 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 some essential concepts that have uh, shaped the way AI is uh, today. Fine. So, uh, uh, so let us kind of uh, briefly give um, or acknowledge some of the. Uh, 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 you know, pre-historical or pre-20th century uh, elements that um, you know that have inspired AI. Uh, the idea of uh, uh, intelligent machines uh, have always been there in, in humanity, uh, and uh, uh, you know, even uh, so, I've given some examples from uh, uh, from Western. Uh, writings and Indian writings as well, uh, where uh, the idea of uh, 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 machines doing something autonomously and uh, doing uh, 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 acting on its own and uh, acting intelligently and so on have, have always uh, captured uh, human imagination. Right? But uh, let us kind of start our uh, story of AI from the mid 20th century with uh, Alan Turing, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, he was uh, now, as you all know, uh, Turing is kind of uh, uh, seen as, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, is known for his uh, Turing machine, which is uh, uh, which is now seen as the <coughs> mathematical model for uh, uh, for effective computing, right? And uh, so all uh, computing today is no more than a Turing machine. And that's all. But then the idea of Turing machines uh, captured the uh, imagination of uh, Turing uh, quite a bit. And he wrote uh, a very interesting paper called Can Machines Think? So, right? and, uh, so as part of that, uh, one of uh, uh, the, he had to address the question of whether uh, uh, what what constitutes intelligence, or what constitutes when can we say that machines are actually thinking, right? And uh, so for that, he gave this example of uh, an observational hypothesis. That is, by observing a machine, 
uh, if we are able to, if we are unable to detect or differentiate between what a machine is doing and what a human being would be doing, uh, then we can reasonably conclude that uh, the, the machine is intelligent. So, we can, uh, so, so this is what is now called uh, the famous uh, Turing test, uh, where uh, this is a hypothetical example where uh, uh, there is a uh, there is a person interacting uh, on two windows using, let's say, uh, you know, typed uh, notes and so on. Uh, behind uh, one of the windows uh, is uh, is a real human being, and behind another window is is a machine, right, a, a computer and so on. And uh, if the human being who is interacting with uh, with uh, with on these two windows, if uh, uh, this human being is unable to differentiate uh, which is the machine and which is the computer, uh, which is the human, right? And uh, then maybe we can reasonably conclude that. Uh, 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 that machines can think, so, right? So, so, so that is uh, the idea of um, uh, the Turing test, and the Turing test uh, uh, had captured the fancy of a lot of people. We'll see further on, uh, uh, which kind of uh, developed this entire area of conversational AI that we see today, uh, on on how uh, you know AI can be used to carry out conversations and so on. And in many cases, uh, one can even argue that um, uh, AI uh, today has has passed the Turing test. That is, it's uh, 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 many uh, uh, interacting uh, people have been unable to differentiate whether they are talking to a human or uh, or an AI and so on. But still, the question remains whether the AI is really intelligent or so on. So, so we'll see different other models of intelligence as we go along. So, but anyway, uh, anyway, coming back to history, uh, so 1951 was when uh, the first uh, chess program was built. And uh, again, the chess was seen as, uh, uh, or, or any other board game, right? Checkers and so on, were seen as uh, an example of uh, intelligent uh, behavior. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, chess and checkers programs uh, were, were built by Christopher Strachey and uh, Dietrich Prince, uh, respectively. Uh, 1956 was um, uh, was when the first um, uh, program to manipulate symbolic logic uh, came about uh, uh, by uh, Herbert Simon, Alan Newell, and, and Cliff Shaw. Uh, so Simon and Newell are, are some are somewhat credited for uh, uh, for starting this entire field of. Uh, 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 symbolic uh, reasoning, and uh, uh, you know, uh, and the, the kind of uh, uh, so so there was this uh, there's this nice story from 1956 we see uh, here uh, where the term artificial intelligence was um, uh, uh, was formally coined, and uh, the term artificial intelligence uh, uh, came from Martin uh, Marvin Minsky and John McCarthy, uh, uh, while uh, Simon and Newell uh, had uh, much more drab sounding name for for what they were doing it was called complex information processing right and uh, so if uh, if the other proposal had won out we would we would just be talking about complex information processing but actually actually that's more accurate while uh, while uh, artificial intelligence sounds more fancy and it can you know it captures the imagination of people but but basically what what's happening underneath is is uh, is com complex information processing right and, uh, yeah, then uh, 56 to 74 is uh, sometimes called the first wave of AI, also called the golden years of, uh, uh, of AI. There is, there is a lot of, uh, uh, the, the, after the term AI uh, caught people's fancy, there was a lot of funding as well, uh, which, which came from DARPA and other uh, agencies. And there's a lot of optimism about, uh, about intelligent machines. You see a lot of uh, science fiction um, uh, involving robotics and futuristic tech, uh, uh, you know, came from this uh, era, right? But uh, but there is a lot of um, optimism about uh, AI. So, 1958 is when uh, uh, neural networks was, were first uh, proposed, artificial neural networks. Uh, uh, so what we see um, as powering AI today in deep learning has has a pretty long history, actually. Uh, Frank uh, Rosenblatt was uh, was the first uh, person to propose artificial neural networks, uh, and as you can see, this uh, uh, th this model kind of uh, um, uh, uh, you know shows how uh, an artificial neural network looked like. It basically uh, took a, a set of inputs uh, and um, uh, uh, and multiplied each one of them with uh, with their synaptic weights, computed a weighted sum, and then uh, uh, sent it through uh, some kind of a step function or a sigmoid function or this right and uh, so at the core of this 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 is basically acting like a like a gate 
right? Uh, uh, in in some sense, right? Uh, where uh, you you have heard of uh, binary gates and so on. Uh, while this is uh, th this is more of a continuous uh, gate system, right? And uh, so uh, typically how um, uh, 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 transistors and others uh, work. Okay, so we'll come back to this uh, why um, this this notion of gate uh, is important and so on when when we talk about autonomy uh, uh, in in AIs. Uh, 1958 is when um, uh, the this program called Advice Taker uh, was uh, was built by uh, John McCarthy, uh, and. Uh, 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 basically uh, introducing um, formal logic into um, uh, into computer program uh, so until then formal logic was um, was pursued more as a, a discipline of philosophy uh, and uh, uh, with um, uh, uh, with advances the, the first wave of ai formal logic also became part of uh, uh, computer science so to speak in 1959, um, Simon Shaw and Newell, uh, the same people who earlier had coined this uh, uh, complex information processing uh, name, right? Uh, so they came out with uh, uh, with a logic-based uh, computing system called uh, General Problem Solver. Uh, so this was what GPS earlier st uh, stood for. Uh, uh, so now GPS stands for something else, of course. And um, so, um, uh, so basically, the uh, the way they um, uh, uh, did was. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, present uh, the, the problem of uh, reasoning, uh, logic-based reasoning, uh, reasoning, inference and deduction and so on as a search problem, right? And um, so problems were represented as well-formed uh, formulas and um, uh, and there were uh, some simplifications that were done. Uh, so uh, based on what are called horn clauses, we'll study a bit of horn clauses in uh, description logic when we uh, in mandate two. Uh, and uh, uh, you know the the entire problem solving itself was presented as a DAG, a, dis uh, a directed acyclic graph, uh, with uh, uh, and uh, searching of the DAG was uh, was seen as a problem solving process. And uh, present day knowledge representation uh, has its, has its uh, roots in semantic nets, uh, which was uh, first proposed again in 1959 uh, by Richard Richens. Uh, at uh, the uh, Cambridge uh, Language Research Unit, uh, where uh, the semantic nets were, uh, as you can see here, the, here is an example of a semantic net, uh, uh, which is pretty much uh, uh, how we still use, um, uh, let's say, an RDF graph, right? And uh, so, so these are uh, uh, these are basically nouns, and uh, these are predicates that are connecting uh, different nouns. So, mammal has vertebra, cat is a mammal. A mammal is an animal, and so on, right? And uh, so, so the uh, uh, the edge label is is the predicate, and uh, uh, the nodes are the entities or or, uh, or nouns. So, okay. So this was uh, uh, proposed as an intermediate representation, uh, and primarily used uh, in machine translation of, of natural languages. So, so if I have to translate from from one language to another, you first represent, uh, you first convert uh, the uh, uh, the, the source text into an intermediate representation and generate the target text from the intermediate representation. Yeah, so um, uh, staying on with uh, natural language, um, uh, in 1964, there was this uh, AI program called Student, uh, which was written by uh, Daniel Bogrove. Uh, this was uh, basically uh, meant to solve algebra problems that were presented in natural language, right? And uh, so if you remember uh, in your uh, uh, primary school or, or high school uh, maths, uh, you, you were asked questions uh, uh, in natural language, which you had to convert to algebra and then solve it. Uh, so, for example, here uh, uh, here is a question like this: uh, the number of people who walk into John's restaurant is twenty percent more than twice the number of customers who walk into Bob's restaurant. How many customers has visited Bob if John was visited by fifty customers? Right? And so, this is typically the kind of high school algebra problems that that you would see, right? And uh, uh, if I have so many mangoes, in, uh, if uh, if the number of mangoes I have is uh, uh, twice this, uh, you know, number of uh, oranges somebody has, and so on. Right? And, uh, so you need to kind of uh, uh, convert this into uh, a symbolic representation underneath, and and then uh, being able to produce an answer. And so on, okay. So question answering systems that we see today, again, uh, have a pretty long history. You know, it dates back at least to uh, 1964 uh, or so. Okay. And of course, the real, the first real conversational AI is the the well known Eliza. 
uh, which uh, was created at, uh, at MIT by, by John Weizenbaum. And uh, this is actually a screenshot of, um, of ELISA, which, uh, 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 which you can still use online. Uh, so this was a, a, a teletype terminal. So, so now uh, you create a teletype terminal on a browser and then you can interact with, uh, with ELISA and so forth. And, uh, and as you can see here, um, uh, ELISA uh, was, um, uh, was acted, uh, was, was primarily uh, presented as some kind of a, a friend or a therapist, you know, in some, uh, well, Weizenbaum did not uh, uh, design it to, uh, to, to be a therapist, but then it kind of became like that, you know, there is, uh, uh, most conversations with Elisa uh, almost look like uh, what a, a conversation one would have with uh, when they go to therapy and so on, right, and uh, so here you see, you know, uh, is uh, this saying, is something uh, troubling you and so on, and uh, uh, the uh, the user is saying, uh, you know, men are all alike, and so on. Okay, uh, then uh, 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 what is the connection to you? So, so, so basically, kinds of keep asking questions. Uh, but uh, what is important to note is that uh, you know, uh, Elisa was basically, you know, it did not have any kind of semantic model underneath, right? And uh, uh, it was not really understanding what was happening in, in it. it uh, the, the primary uh, way in which Elisa uh, worked was. Uh, it took some uh, some responses, previous responses that uh, that the, the, the human user gave, and then repurposed some of it with some heuristic rules to ask uh, a question uh, or to 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 lead the uh, the user into conversation uh, further. And so on, right, and um, so uh, so you see, most of the responses by Elisa are actually in the form of questions. Right, uh, so first it's asking, "Is something troubling you?" Right. And then you say something, and uh, the next again it asks. Yeah. So moving on, um, in 1967, um, you know we we see some advances in uh, uh, robotics, and uh, uh, the Waseda University in Japan creates uh, the first humanoid robot. It was called Wabot. Uh, it was also called an android uh, in those times, and and this is where the name android comes uh, also for. Uh, uh, for the operating system uh, these days, right? And uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know, we'll uh, uh, we'll see uh, robotics has its own trajectory of development as um, uh, as uh, we proceed along. And so, okay. Uh, similarly, uh, in 1967, um, uh, uh, Minsky and Papert they they developed this concept called micro worlds. Uh, where uh, you know which uh, uh, so so we'll, uh, which was basically the precursor of what we currently call the mo model logic uh, kind of uh, uh, reasoning system. So th these micro worlds were used for uh, uh, applications like planning, machine vision, natural language understanding, and so. On. 1968 was when uh, 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 Terry Winograd in, in MIT, uh, so uh, he uh, made his first attempt at natural language understanding. And uh, it was uh, by a system called uh, Sherdlu, S-H-R-D-L-E. The name Sherdlu itself uh, has, a, has a pretty interesting uh, 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 etymology, right? Uh, so uh, you might want to search for uh, uh, this thing called uh, E-T-A-O-I-N. Etoin Shardlu, S H R D L U. Right. Uh, so, so teletype uh, machines in those days, uh, or newspapers especially, in those days, suddenly, you know, in, in the midst of their, uh, um, uh, uh, in the midst of their article, suddenly uh, uh, had this uh, uh, term called Etoin Shardlu, which uh, which appeared over there, and, and it turns out that uh, it had something to do with uh, the way the teletype machines were organized, that uh, th that you couldn't actually erase something. So, if you made a mistake, you just had to. Uh, press the first few, uh, first row of, uh, or first column of uh, uh, the, the teletype machine, which which uh, corresponded to these letters and so on, right? And uh, so so anyway, the, the, that's the name uh, Sherdlu. That's how the name Sherdlu came in. Uh, but uh, uh, but natural language understanding, uh, which um, which the system called Sherdlu uh, implemented, uh, uh, this was implemented using a blocks world, which is a form of the micro world that that uh, uh, Minsky and Papert uh, developed, uh, where uh, 
you could actually give commands to uh, uh, to, to this in, in natural language, right? Uh, uh, take this here, move this there, take this uh, five feet forward or uh, five units forward, take it uh, west and so on. And, uh, so, so you could actually give natural language commands and have the system um, uh, uh, you know, execute these commands. And so, on. Okay. so today, this is again coming back in a different way, right? Uh, so, so we are trying to uh, give natural language commands to, to robots, to, uh, uh, to agents and so on, uh, and have them do certain things. While, uh, while earlier, the, the underlying formalism for this was, uh, was based on the uh, micro worlds uh, developed by Minsky and Pappert. Okay, so um, then um, in 1974 uh, to 80, you know, that, that is when we call the first uh, AI winter, uh, that is when uh, the, the first wave of disillusionment came in, that is a, so, so a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, money was put into to develop, um, you know, symbolic uh, language programming, uh, you know, uh, constructs and, uh, you know, natural language understanding and so on. But uh, uh, they didn't deliver as uh, well as, you know, they, they didn't kind of live up to the hype that was uh, generated and so on, right? And um, so, uh, uh, so a lot of AI algorithms were, were based on this uh, notion called query a search. Uh, but uh, they, they were found to be uh, intractable. Most of the search uh, problems were, were found to be intractable actually, right? And uh, so that is when the Boolean satisfiability, uh, uh, you know, question also uh, was, was brought up. And uh, uh, we can actually show that uh, the, the search problem in answering a, uh, you know, symbolic language query can be represented in the form of uh, a set of uh, logical gates and computing a sequence of uh, uh, you know inputs that can satisfy that can provide a, a logical output as one and so on right and uh, and it was shown to be an np complete problem right uh, you might have studied uh, in in any course on algorithms and so on uh, boolean satisfiability or it's also called the sat uh, is uh, is al almost always shown as uh, uh, the, the prime example of NP completeness. In fact, if we want to show uh, uh, any given uh, algorithm as NP complete, we kind of, uh, 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 you know, represent it as a satisfiability problem. And then we already know that satisfiability is NP complete, and then we show that uh, uh, this is also NP complete. And so, okay. Okay. So, uh, so with the with the first. Um, uh, uh, wave of AI and, and the first AI winter, uh, we can take a pause at this uh, 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 this point in time and uh, end this lecture at, on this note, right? And um, uh, end the third lecture. Uh, and in the next lecture, what we'll do is we'll look at the second golden era of AI and what are the uh, you know key technologies that uh, that were developed uh, during this uh, second golden era. And to just to summarize, the, the first golden era can be summarized by uh, uh, you know uh, uh, logic entering um, the, the realm of AI. Although there were advances in say robotics, there were advances in neural networks and so on, uh, which kind of took off uh, a little later on. Uh, uh, so uh, you know neural networks were, was already there, but uh, it, it was kind of uh, dormant. Uh, and uh, th there's also the, uh, a very well-known uh, debate about um, uh, whether neural networks uh, are, are the way to go or whether logic is the way to go and so on, and uh, 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 which came from this time. And, and, uh, the, and uh, the, the predominant method, a predominant approach for, for AI in these times was, was symbolic logic. Right. And, uh, and there were several important uh, results that came up from symbolic logic, uh, although we kind of reject or we don't, uh, we, we don't exactly reject, we, uh, you know, they, they didn't live up to the expectations that, uh, that they, they proposed. Uh, there are also very important insights that, that they gave us, which are important for us today. Um, uh, when we are trying to, you know, uh, reason about AGI and, um, you know, uh, full AI and so on. So we'll come to, we'll address all of this in the subsequent lectures. So thank you and uh, let me stop sharing and uh, thanks for coming.